All right. Welcome, folks, to the uh, July 29th, 2020 Octant Community Meeting. Uh, we will be covering a couple new things that are just uh, updates around some open issues and, and give a little status update to the, the progress of some of the, the new things that are coming up that we spoke about uh, in, the last, um, in the last community meeting. So I believe, let me share, just let me share this and uh, we'll get started. I believe Sam's going to kick us off with uh, talking about some updates to some context selections and cube config stuff. So let's just share this one and share. There we go. Go ahead, Sam. Cool. So this one, the first item is a reference to issue 909. It's a known issue that's been around for a little while. And essentially, if you have a context name that's super long, and perhaps if you're part of an organization that tells you um, information about the cluster before it actually gets to the part about uh, what differentiates the context name at the very end, then you'd actually have this drop down menu that has all these truncated context names and it wouldn't be a very useful drop down. So we're still exploring options on what's the best way to go about this. A lot of this just seems to be coming from limitations of the clarity component and we're really doing everything we can to avoid re-implementing our own component because the clarity component comes with some free accessibility uh, options for screen readers and such that we don't really want to implement by hand. But if it really comes down to it, I think we will do it anyways. Um, I think the next option we're looking into is just how to do smarter ellipses for overflow. And so uh, we can do some exploration around that type of solution as we uh, make progress on the issue. The second item is the cube conflict flag and the, and I guess by extension, the environment variable as well. So currently the, if you were to use um, a file list of uh, cube configs uh, separated by colon in previous versions of Octan, it would work. But um, we recently did a bunch of refactoring on uh, a loading state for the API um, when Octan is starting. So. This ends up this we ended up breaking the supporting multiple cube configs, so uh, we will have that patched up uh, soon and hopefully push out a release to fix that. Great, thanks, Sam. Uh, so next up on the agenda, I wanted to talk. So we're building out a stepper component. I know there's been a couple requests for this from uh, plugin authors. I spoke to uh, James. Um, uh, who authored the Jenkins X plugin that came out recently uh, and they have a desire to get this in place. And um, I know that there's some, uh, the Helm folks the, that implemented that plugin, they were hoping to have some type of, of wizardy, you know, stepper component. So that, that's currently in progress. We're working on that now. Um, there's, a, there's a draft PR up, but it's still, it's, it's probably gonna be another day before that thing is ready. Um, I'm struggling with Angular and, and various things. So the, that's coming. I also wanted to talk about uh, just a general kind of overview of what we're going to be, uh, what you can expect to see coming out of the next release. So there'll be uh, this new stepper component, which will be getting integrated. There'll be uh, some bug fixes around uh, just general, like uh, quality of life improvements, the, the context selector that Sam mentioned, uh, the multiple concatenated cube config paths that, that Sam uh, spoke to as well. Uh, we're also going to be looking at um, dealing with some of the issues around um, uh, if you're running a local, if you're running a un, uh, what do you, what self-signed cluster, uh, so like you have a self-signed uh, certificate and, and, and a local authority. Right now, Octum will throw an X509 error. Um, was finally able to reproduce that and see exactly, it was actually kubectl kind of helped me figure out how they, I, I went and, and inspected how they were dealing with that. Um, and it was able to kind of come up with a solution that'll be uh, used in Octant. So we'll, folks who are running um, clusters in that fashion will be able to actually use the Octant with them. Um, and there was another thing and it's, it's, it, I'm, we just merged it in. I can't remember what it was. It was a fix. 
that you might have. Uh, oh, the webhooks. So if you were using um, 0.15 uh, with Octant and you went to go to like resource viewer and it had a connection to any webhooks, it was failing to generate a view at all that was throwing an error. And the reason was is because we were, there was two pieces to it. You can see it in the, in the issue, but the, we weren't depending on the server to do the, uh, the upgrade. We were, we were just assuming that it was V1. And then we were also using the server's preferred version of the resource. So even if you had both installed, when Oxent went to create a watcher to, to get a list of those resources, it would, pull the, it would uh, ask the server, what's your preferred version? And then it would attempt to use that version for all of the, of the resources instead of using the one for the actual resource itself. Um, the upside there is that if it was going in the correct direction, it could always convert to, the, to display that resource. But in this case, where it was trying to go the other direction, it was failing to convert the resource because it wasn't supported. So um, uh, Scott fixed that. Uh, that'll be coming out uh, when, we, when we cut our next release as well. Um, so th that, that should unbreak some, some people who were who are running, uh, I know that by default, if you spin up a new GKE cluster and do webhooks on it, you get, you get, uh, you know, 15, uh, you get version 15. So um, th that'll fix that for people who are using that as their default version with webhooks. And that's it for the updates on the agenda. The, is there anything that anyone wanted to add that I might have missed? All right, and then moving on to the open Q&A. So I see Sam, you have a question. Is dark mode for apply YAML editor broken? Uh, I think yes is the answer, right? I can't tell anymore. The editor is so fickle with dark mode being applied. And I think it does some type of caching on its own. So uh, it's, it's odd because Sometimes it behaves fine. And then when I see other people use it, it's not okay. So I don't know anymore. Yeah, I think, I think it is broke. I think I've seen enough people using Octant with dark mode enabled, pull up the editor and it be in light mode that I, I'm willing to say that yes, it is. It's, it's malfunctioning. I wouldn't say it's broken. Cause if you like go and manually toggle the toggle it right, well, broken, whatever. I'm splitting hairs. It's, it is broken, but it is also, it's, it works, but it's malfunctioning. So yeah, it's broken. Um, so yeah, if we don't already have an issue for it, let's go ahead and create one, and um, and we'll get that. We'll get that. Try and get that resolved as well, because that that's an annoying, definitely an annoying thing when you're, especially if you're like me, where you're like everything on your desktop is in dark mode if possible, and then all of a sudden you get blasted in the eyeballs with white background. <laughs> it can be jarring in, in the middle of the night. So um, yeah, we'll, we'll we'll look at getting that fixed. Any other questions? I think it's just us three. So if there are, if there are not, then we will uh, we'll call it a nice short and sweet one. All right. Thank you, everyone.